Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And we're going to talk about a few, I think, really important things to say, like, how do you protect all of this in bad weather? Especially during, like, extended power outages and things like that. What are some things that we do here to ensure the safety of our animals, and especially the safety of our eggs? But before we get to that, we got to bring you a word from a few of our friends. That is from our friends over at the Colorado Cold Bloods. Now, you never got to meet these guys, have you? Nope. I did, because these are the same people I stayed with when we went to the Denver show. So Corey and his wife are both very awesome. And believe it or not, it's actually Aaron. So scary as it is, it's Corey and Aaron. And they sent us these rockin' t-shirts with their emblem. They also sent us beer. And let me tell you something about Olympus Reptiles. If you'd like us to wear your t-shirt, all you really gotta do is this t-shirt and beer. Well, probably. We like, we like beer. Not only did he send us beer, he sent us craft beer. So I'm enjoying a dry dock vanilla porter. Mm. Was it a beer? Avery. Avery Lager. So, I figure in the middle of this, and I did not warn Kurt about any of this before we started. Oh, I also got to show you. So even the glasses have their emblem in it, and I got to figure out where you got those, Corey, because I need to get some Olympus Reptiles glasses in my life. These things are pretty sick. Uh, we're going to rate the beer, because we talked, believe it or not, about doing a random drunken beer channel sometime of just us getting drunk and talk about Beer. Beer. <laughs> so, go ahead and let me know what you think. I don't know. This is really smooth. It's not too hoppy or anything. I know a lager's not too much. No. But, I don't know. It has some really good flavor. I think, I don't know. The color's good, I guess, too. Yep. Looks like a lager color. Yeah. Now, like, we're a Coors guys, typically. How would you rate it to a Coors? If a Coors on a scale of 0 to 10 is a, is a solid 5, and a Bud Light is about a point five, uh, where would you <laughs> where would you put this? I think about an 8. You like it better than a standard Coors, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Well, me, I'm enjoying the Vanilla Porter, and it's actually really good. Vanilla beer can always be a little bit sketchy, because sometimes they go overboard in the vanilla, but this is... This has just got the right amount of that bean in there, and mm, it is awesome. And we actually have very different beer flavor taste, so you're not much into the darker stuff. Not really. I like the darker stuff. Uh, I hate IPAs, and you kind of dig those. Yeah, I, I kind of like them. Uh, there was a uh, company here that used to make them, and they went out of business, but I liked we love their beer. So Tall Grass. If anybody from Tall Grass watches this, we, we do miss that beer. They had a badass dark beer in the Buffalo Sweat. I loved it. And you like the 16-bit, wasn't it? It was 8-bit. 8-bit. And then they had a Velvet Rooster, which was kind of like a, more of like a, was it a Belgian? Or? I, I remember why you liked the Belgian Rooster. You want to share why you liked the Belgian Rooster? You only one reason he liked it. Because it was like a 8.9% uh, alcohol. So this is a guy here who weighs like, what, a buck 65? Yeah. You can get drunk in like two beers and be like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> I saw this is a uh, 5% alcohol. Right, and the porter, I mean a porter, typically a little bit stronger, I think it's 5.4. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to knock these beers down, say thank you one more time, and get into the meat potatoes of how to protect your ball python collection and your incubator, you know, like if there's a big storm knocking your power out. So I've had my beer, we've given our shout out. But now it is time to get to the meat and potatoes of today's video. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have to leave my reptile room and go into the bowels of my basement. So, I want to apologize in advance because it's probably a wreck. Uh, we have no time. Let's go check out a few things. First of all, it's going to be very hard to power all of this. And your goal in a, in a power outage situation should not necessarily be perfect. Like, it'd be great. The best thing you could do is have a wired-in, hardwired generator that can run your entire house and all of that. But that's going to be very, very expensive. I know that. Uh, that's not reasonable for a lot of people or a lot of homes. I understand that. We don't have that either. So let me show you what we use. Don't mind the rats. They're for food later. The rabbit is not. So it's going to be a little dark. We're filming this at night. But if Kurt will come out here with me, this is our rusty, trusty uh, Ford generator. It's the only Ford product I've ever bought. Uh, it serves us well. Here's the thing with this. So... It's not going to put out a lot of power. Actually, 2,500 watt is what it can carry through with a 3,000 peak. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm simply going to extension cord from my reptile room out to here with one cord. And I'm going to run a, uh, a space heater. 
a space heater that's going to just heat the entire room and I'm going to crank that thing up knowing I'm going to use a significant amount of that wattage, like 1500. So I can use 1500 watts to provide pure heat directly to my reptile room and try to keep my reptile room above a degree that's going to be cold. Now in the summertime, not a big concern, right? Because my whole house is going to warm up. But what if I lose it due to ice? This is where it's going to come in and be a big concern. However, 1500 watt heater probably wouldn't heat that room for an extended amount of time uh, all by itself in the winter, right? I mean, we're in Kansas. It gets down to like five degrees out here. Actually, I've seen like negative, I don't know. I forget what the most I've seen is. So that brings us to stage two. Again, don't mind the cat food mess. My wife loves cats. And that is this guy here. What we have here is a wood burning stove. It is fully functional. So if we're really without power, and I'm talking extended like a week, two weeks, whatever, I can run this wood burning stove along with that space heater in there. This will help to keep the whole area warmer. Well, that helps to keep just that room warmer. So we'll be able to keep the ball pythons warm enough to get through that. Are they gonna be feeding great for that week or two? Probably not. Are they gonna be at optimal 90 degree basking temp? Probably not. Can I keep that room at 75 to 80 degrees? Yeah, I can do that. We can definitely do that. Uh, and that's gonna be the key. The key here is going to be survival and keep them from getting disease. But now the big question in the summertime I really have to worry about is a big old storm coming by and knocking out power while I've got an incubator full of eggs. Guys, that's happened twice this year to me. We've been out without power for a significant amount of time that could start to put my eggs in danger. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use that generator over there and we're going to use that with a long extension cord. As a matter of fact, it's here in the floor because we just had to do this the other day. So we'll run this from our reptile room outside and we'll simply just plug our, gener our generator directly into this. So basically we unplug that from the wall and we plug it into our generator. And that generator with that much wattage can run that space heater for me and it can run this with no problem. It keeps some spare gas on hand, you can keep it running and you can maintain your temps just like nothing happened in your incubator and you can keep your ball pythons warm enough and nothing to worry about. Personally, I feel like this is something that if you're going to be serious about breeding, you really need to consider depending on where you live. If you live in an area that is susceptible to power outages, right, uh, be prepared. Because you think about it, I don't even know what we paid for that generator, but we bought it in the off season when nobody was buying generators. We got it on sale for a pretty reasonable cost. Do you remember what it was, Kurt? No idea. It was like 250 275 maybe, something like that? Probably. So, you know, we, yeah, that's still a significant amount of money, right? But think about what's sitting in this incubator right now. We already hatched five clutches out of it. We got a Klitz to banana black pastel clutch, a normal to banana black pastel clutch cooking, a lesser pastel to GHI clutch, and a pastel head exanthic to zebra bee clutch. There are single animals that are, out of these animals here that'll be worth more than that generator cost me. So it's kind of a no brainer to invest in making sure I can keep these safe and keep these at a good solid temperature. And as you can see, even with the power outage for several hours yesterday, everything in there is looking great, right? Look at this clutch. I mean, they look perfect. Ah, so that is a really important thing to do. Uh, now, is there other ways to do it? Probably. Do I wish I had a built into the house automatic generator? Yes, I do. Will we maybe do that someday in the reptile house? It's quite possible as everything moves over and our operation grows, we may invest more in the protection. But for right now, this is the protection that we have to use. And <laughs> here the cat's knocking crap over. And this is what we're gonna do. So basically, when do we turn it on? Well, it depends on your incubator. This thing is a big ass fridge made to be insulated. So guess what? It does a really good job at being insulated, which is awesome. So as long as you're not opening it, you know, I opened it, we lost a degree, it'll gain that degree back really quick, no problem. But as long as you're staying the hell out of there, it's gonna hold temp pretty well. So if power goes out for about an hour, I don't worry about it. I let this do its job, right? I know that my temps get a little low than too hot. We get to be over an hour, then I'm gonna go turn that generator on. Uh, get it running, get it hooked up, so that way I know if we're going into hour two, hour three, hour four, hey, I'm good to go. I got nothing to worry about. Uh, so that's kind of our plan and how we do things and it served us well. You know, the first year we bought it, never had to use it. I used it once last year and I've already used it twice this year. Once the studio lightning knocking out the power and once a massive windstorm that took our power out for about four hours, which was the most recent incident. 
So, Kurt, anything you want to add? Um, so, does this incubator run at full power, or how does it? It doesn't. So, you would kind of need to know the power of your incubator, and I couldn't tell you the exact power of this, but I know it's extremely low. So, basically, what we're running in there, I may have some of it in here to show you. Uh, I don't. But we're running, I think it's 10 inch heat tape in the bottom half of that. So you're talking about a pretty wide heat tape. We're running two strips. I wanted heat to be from both sides. And then we're running a small computer fan that pushes air from the top down. So as heat builds on the sides, rises, it starts this circular pattern going through the incubator kind of like this, which is what we were going for to keep air moving. Now, it maxes out at 32% power is all I allow this to have. Uh, so like right now, it's all it's getting. So you figure there's probably, you know, maybe four feet of 10 inch heat tape. So each foot uses so much wattage, but it's only getting 30% of that wattage. So this is probably running on less than, I'm sure it's running on less than 500 watts, no problem, probably a lot less than that. You don't even really notice when it's on. So we're gonna be just fine on running to our, our wattage. And that was kind of the thing, 1500 watts, I can run up to 2,500, or I think was it 2,500 watts. And uh, so I wanted to make sure it's under 1,000. So when I put all this together, we knew that generator was big enough to handle the job that we had. Now, it's not much bigger for anything else. So if we ever expand, we're gonna have to add another generator or a bigger generator. Truth be told, we do have another generator that runs a little less power than that. I wanna say it runs 1,500 or 1,750. That's a super quiet small one we use for camping. So we could also use that if we ever needed to. But that is kind of a, our current plan. Anything else? No. Nope. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, I implore you to uh, make sure you protect your investment, right? It's, you put your life into this, you put your work into this, you put your heart into this, you put your soul into this. I don't want something like a damn branch falling off a tree and hitting a power line to ruin my entire season. And that $250 insurance policy out there is it's worth its weight in gold. It really is. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.